Awesome. Uh, well, everybody, uh, today we initially planned to do a workshop. Uh, however, we just took a small pivot within the same subject matter and made this a fast forward session. As you know, that our fast forward sessions are ones that are progressive thinking, um, and we're always trying to find uh, solutions, very quick solutions um, as to what can we do now? What can we do in two weeks? Uh, so we always try to have as much fire as possible. Uh, so today uh, we'll be looking at what are the opportunities during and post COVID-19. Uh, the STEMI sessions right now during the lockdown are really, really focused at this particular subject matter during and post COVID-19, because we know that post COVID-19 is what we will be calling and everybody is calling the new normal. So uh, we need to be prepared for that and we need to continuously dialogue to ensure that we are able to uh, uh, be ready for, 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 these, um, uh, for these new environments that we'll be going into. Um, there'll be things that will be accepted. Uh, there'll be faster uh, adoption of uh, digitization, but it's good that we look at these type of things. Uh, today, uh, the, the, uh, our president of PYCT, Leon Rhodes, uh, is meant to uh, join us. However, uh, myself and Steve will be having a conversation on content and the economy in uh, content, content creation. Um, and we'll just kind of dive through it. Uh, I know Steve has a presentation with some very interesting numbers. Uh, and I'll be going over some things. So uh, I'll be just host today. And really, uh, Steve has some very interesting insights that um, he'll be sharing with us. Um, yeah, so I think today's session will probably be around an hour. We won't go too long. Um, so Steve is with me today, and I'm sure the president will join us a bit later. Um, on the other hand, today we know that it's telecommunications uh, day. I think it's telecommunications and, and information society day. So we thought it's very important that when you're looking at information society, uh, is, this is what is been done with STEMI. We distributing information on a constant basis and consistency is everything. Without it, uh, I think even PBICT as a brand, we will suffer some blows. And that's something that we're really uh, uh, avoiding as much as we can. So we take these platforms very serious. And if there are more people who want to speak, I know there's been interest for, from people who want to talk about WISP payments and those type of things. So the interest is growing and I love that. And more SMMEs, more SMME owners, more professionals, students, please uh, get hold of us. Uh, tell us the subject matter you want to speak about uh, and we'll be able to uh, accommodate you. Fast forward, yet again, we're looking at now, what can we do now in the short term? How can we react now in the short term? Those are the type of things that we need to talk about. La uh, the last fast forward session that we had, which was a Sunday session, we really spoke about how government can play a role in the economy um, and uh, especially in telecoms, because telecoms is a continuous subject matter. Although today is telecoms day, it's with a very, painful um uh, it's, it's a, a painful appreciation that the day is there but it's painful that we can't really celebrate telecommunications and information society because as a country we're still very far from being able to celebrate such a thing it's very painful to think that we can celebrate it you know i think that the day is there, let's appreciate the efforts of the ITU and other uh, bodies, uh, ICT bodies for this day. Uh, but it's painful. It's painful to think that my cousin, um, who's Emma and Law somewhere, um, can't watch this freely. It's, it's painful that uh, other members that we have as PBICT, their family members in the farmlands, in the homelands, 
part of the Egyptian society. That is a sad thing about today and make it difficult for us to celebrate. So for us, this conversation is a day-to-day -day conversation. We don't wait once a year to talk about this. We will continuously talk about it every week if we have to, because we know that telecoms is the backbone of communication, is the backbone of the 14th Russell Revolution. We always say that. It's important that we reiterate this continuously so people understand how important communication is. We need to be able to get people onto the internet so they can be part of information societies. They cannot be part of information societies like this. They are not part of it. And we will then be talking about opportunities that people can capitalize, but obviously once they're connected. So if you do have some form of connection and the, the information that Steve will be sharing with us today, I think it's very important that we, we find a way to capitalize on utilizing the assets that we have so we can stimulate the economy because this topic today is about that. We need to find ways to stimulate the economy. And today we'll be talking about content uh, and the content space um, and how it plays a role. So I won't go into, into it too much. I'm gonna allow Steve to, to run us through a, a, a presentation he has with great numbers, uh, great stats, great information, because now we'll, be, we'll, we'll try. I, I think this is a form of us trying to celebrate today, uh, but the, these economies we're talking about are enabled by telecoms and communication. For us, the, the biggest fight, the biggest drive is to ensure that we have uh, a broadband, we are using things like white, uh, a TV white space. The spectrum conversation never dies. It's a continuous conversation. The one conversation never dies. It's a continuous conversation. Because when we win that battle, we now can build economies on top of that infrastructure. And we cannot emphasize that enough that that is where the second game is. Connectivity has allowed, and I've said this before, connectivity has allowed companies like Uber, companies like Google, companies like Airbnb, companies that rely on being internet-based companies to survive, cloud-based companies survive off of internet. So it's very, very important that we take the spectrum fight very serious, the spectrum conversations very serious, the one conversations very serious, Broadband internet conversations, very serious. It prepares us for these economies. But we drill down now. We're talking about COVID-19. We're in the lockdown. COVID is reached, the, 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 the pandemic has reshaped the world. It continuously reshapes the world week by week. And that's why week by week, we have to have these conversations. So we are not, not out of touch. We shouldn't think that whatever we spoke about 30 days ago is still relevant. It will not be. We need to fast track and see ourselves really expanding our conversations and ensure that they're continuous and they're ubiquitous all the way to the end of the lockdown until we have the infrastructures, until we are at a place where we know that we can survive off of digital economies. So uh, Steve, I'll give you the floor. Um, I know you're ready, um, and you can take it away. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Dennis. Um, so welcome, guys. It's um, it's great to be here on a Sunday for the Fast Forward. Again, I highlight everything that Dennis spoke about in terms of connectivity. Um, we know that connectivity is the backbone um, and the foundation to allowing technology and other sets of um, sort of things to, to happen. Um, without internet um, and without, we would be looking at the, the way the modern world is working. So I'm not gonna deep dive into connectivity or anything. I'm gonna have a look at what can go over the top of connectivity. Um, 
And I've got a small presentation that we can go through and it highlights the immediate facts that we can look at um, and opportunities that are available right now. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, is uh, Dennis, can you just enable my screen just to do sharing? Um, please. Oh you, oh, you can't share right now. No. <laughs> Wait, wait a minute. So, uh, uh, okay, just make. Okay, Steve, I will just make your host quickly, and then. Okay, sweet. I'll make your co-host quickly. Yeah, uh, that's oh, perfect. Lovely. Awesome. That's David. perfect. So. So what I've highlighted here is what are the new opportunities during and post COVID-19? Um, we can look at it and say, well, we're in the middle of a pandemic, but in the middle of a pandemic is when things can change. Um, it's when entrepreneurs shine. Um, it's where PBRCT are currently having members sitting in Joburg, Cape Town, Durban, um, and contributing to a webinar um, across the country and streaming it live. All these sort of things um, are quite fantastic in terms of, because we have to think out of the box. We can't go to physical meetings anymore. So my first opportunity that I'm going to present today to everyone is, is learner management systems. Um, so what we're really looking at is, is that schools, TVETs, um, universities, all of them are having a problem at the moment in terms of actually being able to get students to still be able to study. Um, this creates a great opportunity for the entrepreneur. Um, we've got a whole lot of learner management systems here. We've got Moodle, Talent LMS, former LMS. Um, you've got Opnigo, you've got Ilias, Docust, Open LAT, and Saki. All of these um, are free learner management systems. So you can either download them and run them on your own system as a virtual machine, or you can download them and put them into a hosted center. Most of them are Linux based, so they're very cheap to run. And they have the ability for you to upload uh, content and course material. So last week I started working with um, a, a company that teaches and I provided help to them in terms of uploading everything into a Moodle application so that they could start teaching next week. Um, I was teaching them on how to use it and showing them how to use it um, so that they could then release that out to their students. That's one small firm. There are plenty of places now that need help. Um, what I'm saying here is, is that with a little bit of ingenuity, people can download the, and watch the videos for Moodle, play online with the free versions. Um, the content that needs to be created can be charged for. You may need to get videos um, and upload them showing welding or showing bricklaying or showing film editing or mathematics or anything like that. Um, content needs to be uploaded uh, in terms of worksheets, um, books, ebooks, those sort of things. Immediately you start moving um, a school's curriculum online as opposed to sitting in normal paper bags for them. Um, and then they have the ability to carry on teaching during the lockdown period. So this is a great way for people to be able to pass um, and, and uh, earn revenue against this. Um, and it's a case now of thinking about in your local area, are there any local TVETs, are there any local colleges, um, schools, anything like that, that you could contact and actually help um, and buy a fee for it in order to be able to gain revenue uh, at this time. Bearing in mind that the market um, and the entry level to market is very low because all of the software that I've highlighted here is all open source and free. So it's, it's a case of play with it for a while, learn it, um, and then from there, you can take it further and start selling those services. If I told you that learning Moodle would take you a day, maybe two max to be able to go through the whole thing, and you could be setting up Moodle and selling it as, as early as next week, Wednesday. Um, I'm also gonna talk about content now. Um, so the content that I'm running um, in terms of some of the things. Yeah. So 
sorry about that, guys. I, I had a small visitor. Um, so what we're looking at now is, is the fact of the film industry. This is post COVID, but it also allows you with this time to think about things. So I'm gonna put this out there that the film industry is relatively untapped in South Africa. Uh, we are filled with American content, which we take as what we use. Um, people are watching more American content than local. It's really strange and in the rest of the world, most local content takes uh, pre precedence over international content. So recently there was a, a crime drama series called Queen Sono that was released on Netflix. Um, it's an African TV series that's coming out of Kenya. Um, but if you watch it, you'll recognize a lot of South African um, TV and film stars in it. Uh, it was a number one on Netflix. The revenue generated in terms of the African subscription video on demand services was $183 million last year. It's expected to increase sevenfold to more than 1 billion by 2025. So what we're looking at is, is that online streaming content for Ghana, for uh, Nigeria, for Kenya, and we hope South Africa would increase. This means that we're gonna have an expected increase on production. So if we're gonna look at an expected increase on production, it would then make sense to how do we get involved? So there's different areas. Um, film is absolutely fantastic. You can have photographers, you can have script writers, you can have editors, you can have rotoscopers, animators, titlers, uh, composers, musicians. It's, it's fantastic in terms of the industry that it opens. Um, specifically within KZN, because I live within KZN, um, we'll touch some base on why potentially KZN could become a growing area to film as opposed to Cape Town or Joburg. Uh, at the moment, uh, not a lot of people know this, but last week, um, the film industry was allowed to go back to work. Um, so under level three, they're allowed to work. That's quite an interesting theory is that they're actually allowed to go on set now and start filming. Um, these sort of opportunities that come about for this means that there will be money put back into content, especially if it's American money. For every one dollar spent, which full made um, on a Hollywood budget is in the region of eighty to one hundred million, we need more companies to actually film here in South Africa. Uh, that money will come in. So these opportunities in the market, you know, and we've heard rumors of potentially um, a film studio being built within KwaZulu Natal. There's more film studios that are potentially supposed to be going up in Joburg and Cape Town, and effectively we'll, we'll know that this sort of content um, can get created more. And we need to have, start preparing for that by creating stories for our own people. So if you're in KwaZulu Natal, think of our stories that would be for KwaZulu Natal. Um, we've got some great history with Shaka Zulu. Uh, we've got some great history in terms of our people, the struggles. Um, so this, this opens up many opportunities and many doors. Touching on that, um, I'm just gonna show two little things here. And, and the one that we're looking at is Durban weather. And the other one is that we're looking at Cape Town weather. Um, when we have a look at everything, we know Durban is hot. We know Cape Town's got nice weather, but effectively Cape Town's got nice weather for 60 to 80 days of the year. Durban's got nice weather for 300 days of the year. In film perspective, you can shoot more days of the year in Durban than you can in Cape Town because of the weather. It sounds stupid, but it's fairly interesting in that. Now, I touch it just to, to highlight it, and I'm sure Dennis and I are going to come back to it in a conversation just now in terms of what we can expect and what we can open from a film side of things, what opportunities can actually be unpacked from that and where people can start having a look at things because the idea for me today is to tell you more things that you can do now. So the next thing that I'm gonna to touch you about is YouTube. Interestingly enough, YouTube traffic has been rolling more than ever now. Um, more people are watching YouTube, more people are watching Netflix. Netflix has had to downgrade some of its um, services. 
um, in order to accommodate for the amount of traffic. Uh, um, but if we look at it, I'm talking specifically about how you make money off YouTube. So individuals and businesses make millions of dollars through YouTube advertising. There are risks to using a platform controlled by another com company, um, but not only is the chance that a change in Google's search algorithms could break the video off, and it's the way Google works, but Google also takes a hefty 45% cut of the revenue from video advertising. However, YouTube is a massive platform. It's the second largest search engine after Google. However, Google owns YouTube. Um, and the benefits of reaching a YouTube audience and having Google handle most labor intensive parts of building and advertising network outweigh the costs that this platform is a great resource for turning videos into cash. So how do we do that? How do you turn videos into cash? Um, most people make a plan in terms of becoming an influencer. And if we have a look at what an influencer is, influencer is someone who has the power to affect the purchase decisions of others because of his or her authority, knowledge, and a position or relationship with his or her audience. Um, the distinct niche which where he or she actively engages and the size of the following depends on his or her topic. So if we look at it, an influencer could be Kanye West. It could be Beyonce. They say they like something, all of a sudden, a whole lot of people go out and buy it because they like it. Um, in the early 90s, Oprah was an influencer. If she said a book was good, it could go to number one. Um, this is fairly interesting because if you create a YouTube channel, and let's say that you're really good at IT, so you're very good at networking, and you promote certain types of networking. So you may be looking at Cisco's Meraki, or you may be looking at something else, and you become an influencer and people start listening to what you're doing and buying product against that. Um, you can then start making revenue off it. It denotes an amount of followers that you have, denotes in terms of how many views are done. So you would look at it and say, well, for 500 views on a YouTube page, effectively you could be making $3. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you hit 10,000 views or 100,000 views a day, um, you can start earning revenue against a YouTube channel. So there's certain steps that you can do um, and you can Google it to be able to make your YouTube channel um, a, a currency-based channel and, and you can start revenue and they'll post advertising on it. Um, but it is a way to make money. So with that being said, you would look at certain sets of things and you could go back to what you do and take it very basic. If you're really good at something, you could start uploading it. Um, I'm all sure that we've watched YouTube videos where we sat there for hours watching these guys build huts, swimming pools, brews, full it up and we go, oh, okay. And they don't look like they should be able to build anything like that, but they make amazing things. These guys who are making woodwork, these guys who are welding, these guys who are just talking, these guys who are showing their gaming. If you're really good at gaming, you could run a gaming channel. That brings you into the next section with online gaming. Um, we had touched it a while ago, and I know that um, Dennis had spoke about online gaming and the opportunities behind it. Um, at the moment, online gaming, you can start earning revenue. Um, I don't think South Africa has really woken up to the fact properly that there are professional gamers around the world, people who play and get paid to play. The online gaming business is bigger than Hollywood. The revenue that's earned against it is massive and the budget against the games can go anywhere up to 800,000 to a billion. So playing online games also becomes a way of making money. Um, as, as strange as it may seem, if I was told 25 years ago that I could make money by gaming, I probably would have gone back and, and started gaming some more. Um, but I haven't been able to do that. Um, so when you have a look at that and we say, what is an influencer? We could say that potentially P PBRCT is an influencer um, as they have the ability as they have the ability to say um, exactly what it is that they, they like or not like and make recommendations on things. Um, and potentially our channel has X amount of views so we could use it and gain revenue off it. Um, 
and ensure that we're promoting the right sets of things. But with that becomes a responsibility. So one needs to be quite responsible in terms of what you do and what you say. Um, there's a guy who does breakdowns of cell phones and reviews them and companies give him cell phones where he'll scratch them and he'll break them and review it. His uh, channel is called Jerry Rig. Um, and he'll cut a phone in half or he'll open it or he'll put a lighter against it. And when he does that, um, he gives it a review um, and the cell phone companies take it really seriously. Um, and that's all he does. And he makes an excess of a hundred thousand US dollars a month just reviewing um, cell phones and taking it apart and putting it back together. So again, we look at it and go, it's a very strange world that we live in where you can make money without leaving your home and you just have that opinion. And if people like the opinion or look at what you're doing, they could follow it and revenue could be made against it quite comfortably. So I've stopped there. And I think I'm going to stop my share now and bring Dennis back in so we can start having a conversation and open it up a little bit more and see if anyone else wants to comment on things um, and see where we at with things. Dennis? Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Good, good. Okay, Steve, uh, I also have some, uh, I have like four slides to share quickly. Okay. Um, and I, I'm happy that you touched on the, uh, the, the mobile game space uh, and really just the gaming, uh, the gaming space. So let me just put my camera on, Steve. And yeah, so Steve, thanks, thanks for the presentation. I think I also do uh, something. Uh, I'll just do a quick presentation just to um, uh, assist some of the points that you were talking about. Uh, in the in the gaming space, but I'll, I'll kind of just be zeroing down more on mobile games, and and the reason why is because uh, mobile games are just easily adopted. You know, um, you already have a cell phone. Because remember, this is a fast forward session, so you already have a cell phone. A lot of us have cell phones, but how many games do we uh, play that are made in Africa, that are made in South Africa? That's a very important thing. So um, I'll just quickly share my screen here, just so we can have a look at, uh, here it is. Mm, okay, cool, I'll go full screen. Awesome. So when we're looking, what we're looking at here is obviously content from uh, New Zoo and you can find it yourself. The website is this, this is a 2019 report. Everyone can see the numbers. Look at the number. Just for mobile games, this is the economy, this is the market of mobile games. We're not talking about being a professional player as yet. We're just saying you as someone who can create games, you who, can, who has basic coding skills, you have HTML5 skills, you have JavaScript skills, what can you do with them today to go into an economy that's booming for during COVID-19 Post COVID 19, playing games is something, is a recreational activity that is going absolutely nowhere. It's going to be here for a very long time. So, this is the global games market. All right. This is from 2019. $68.5 billion on just mobile games. Just mobile games. I'm not talking about anything else. The reason why I'm highlighting it, because we all can see here, is that what is mobile games doing in terms of domination? You understand? We're not just talking about games in general. We'll still have one where we talk about games in general. The steps, the, the economy around it, meaning that who are the people that can be employed? We're just talking about just mobile game development. That for you tomorrow, you're sitting, you're like, oh, I have no opportunities. I have access to internet. I have this. I can create a mobile game now and, create, and be part of this economy of the $68.5 billion. Uh, this is just the e-sporting side. Just a quick overview of the e-sporting side, right? Just look how much that Steve was talking about sponsorship. So if you're running an e-sports uh, e or an online game uh, 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 channel, 
just look at the money in the, the gameplay side of things. When you're a player, when you organize events, this is where it's at. This is where it's at. Advertising revenue, this is where it's at sponsorship, and then also uh, uh, in terms of game publisher fees. The game publisher is the person who's making the, 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 the fees. This is just in a year. This is a year, in, a year on year growth. And we can see what's happening with these numbers here. Look at the sponsorship number that you can get. So these are things that are very important. When we're talking about today, we don't want to just talk about, oh, telecommunications and, and, and information society day. We're saying the infrastructure of telecommunications, the devices within telecommunications allow us to create economies and us as Africans, we need to start taking those opportunities and building on top of them. And so we can contribute to this economy that we're seeing here. Look at these numbers are insane in dollars with a D. And we know that the rent to the dollar now is currently sitting around 18. So today, yes, let's celebrate telecommunications and information society day. We wanna be the information society as much as we can, because we understand the backbone of telecoms. When we are looking at, this is a 2014 stacks. Look at Africa. Look at Eastern Europe. We're lagging behind as Africa. Even Australia is doing better than us in terms of the players. And we're looking at mobile game monetization. Mobile game. We're not talking about consoles that you still have to invest in another X amount of, no, we're saying on a device that everybody has, you can now start developing uh, uh, games on top of for this device, for these devices, cell phones. Let's not worry about competing with electronic arts and all of these places. No, let's start where we can, where we can accelerate. If you in a household of five to three people, six people, we African families, we big, Sometimes Omalu maybe to live with us and so forth. If everybody in the house has a a a a a, a, um, a cell phone, meaning that for leisure they could play games, and you can start creating games for those type of people. You can isolate and specialize in creating games for elderly people, creating games for 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 kids, which are educational uh, type games, creating games for the workplace. Sky is the limit. You don't have to repeat what everybody's doing. You can open up. That economy now starts looking at the people that Steve was talking about, the influencers, where now if we have enough games, now there's an economy that we can talk about. And I think at another stage, Steve, we can just talk about esports as a subject matter on its own. We'll really drill down into it. And maybe we, we can uh, do that in a workshop or a master class. But this is the economy. Now, this is something that will blow your mind. So normally, when we're talking about video creation, there'll always be a couple of uh, names that come up. Adobe, this and that. There'll always be top three names that everybody goes to to use. I'm, I use Adobe uh, After Effects and all of these type of play, uh, 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 platforms to help with content creation. But the mobile content creation space on its own is the most amazing thing because those YouTube videos that Steve was talking about can be shot on cell phones because your cell phone has a camera. So your cell phone is a camera. Your cell phone is a game machine. It's a game engine. It's a game machine. It can play games. Your cell phone is a communication device. It can do instant messaging. So when we're looking at the mobile, that this telecommunication enables, because it's telecommunications today, comrade, let's not forget that. It's telecommunications day to day. We're looking at the economy just around mobile uh, uh, in this particular segment. And adding on to what Steve has been talking about, these are 2014 numbers. What's happening in 2019? Go out and find the information, utilize your data and find the information. Find out in the game economy, what can I do if I can't develop games? Can I be a game reviewer? Can I be a game player and a tester? Can I 
what can I do? Can I be a professional player? Can I be a league owner for mobile games and find a way to do competition in mobile games? You understand? We need to split our economy, comrades. During COVID, this is what we should be thinking about. Let's be creative. Post-COVID, let's continue the momentum. I know there's a comedian, Torles Mo. Uh, he's really into gaming and he's pioneering in his space. He's already doing game resales and all of that stuff. There. You could start a game school if you want to, a mobile game specifically for mobile. So the, mo the economy around just thinking about mobile, because we, yet again, yet again, we're celebrating telecommunications. It's fine. We're celebrating information society. It's fine. Let's be information society. Share this information. Stimulate this market. Until we are in the billions of rands, or rather billions of dollars in economy, because people will sit at home. Yesterday, there was a, 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 a masterclass, and uh, uh, one of our comrades from the free states, his name is Ali, He's an animator and he's taught himself how to develop games also. You understand? And the thing is, the, the one thing he said, you can work from home. We don't have to set up huge offices because now we're talking about two things. We're talking about post-COVID and, uh, and during COVID. During COVID, that means that you can actually start a company during COVID. You need to find a way, even if you don't have data, to go to a Udemy, to go to a Coursera or whatever to learn how to develop games for a specific engine, you'll borrow money, buy me airtime, please. I can convert that to data, then I can download my lessons. Those are things that you need to do. Be part of the information society, the information collecting society and the information dissemination society. Let's be part of that. Comrades, there's money to be made. SMME owners, there's money to be made. Youth, there's money to be made. Females who are ostracized across the board, there is money to be made. You can start your own mobile society and a mobile economy. Let's not just be users, comrades. Talking about users, I'm going to the creators. This is a board of the popular platforms that you can go to. To get started, Unity is one of my favorites. Uses C Sharp as a business logic behind. And if you're already a C-sharp guy, you can learn and understand how Unity works with game development. And you can work with a game developer. And you already have a game studio. Build it off of sweat equity. Teach other people. Go to your government. Ask for assistance. Unreal Engine, another one. I think it uses C+, or it also uses C-sharp. There's others like uh, game, GameCube. There's others like... Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Cocos 20, Game Maker Studio. There's a variety, there's different ways that you can go about. There've been other uh, uh, platforms that come and go, but this, it's here. If there's so many platforms that the rest of the world is utilizing and we are not, then I think there's something wrong with us. As part of fast forward, tomorrow, we should be going into finding out how can I use Unity? How can I use Unreal? How can I use a, 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 a game box? How can I find the one that will enable me? A monkey engine is great. If you go to monkey engine, there's a variety of different courses, teaching kids how to code and all of those type of things. There's courses there and material there. Parents, don't be afraid for your child to learn. If they love gaming, make them become great game creators. Because you're taking out that 1,500 and taking out that 700 and to buy the games. So you should now teach them and enable them to be game creators themselves. Where can we start? On the mobile space. It's the most accessible space for us to start now. As in tomorrow, we should be creating games for mobile. Learning games for mobile. Teaching games for mobile. Games for the elderly. Let's start thinking and opening up our minds about this economy and the mobile economy. So as a way to say we're celebrating telecommunications, that, that's a sad one. But the information part, the information part is important that we share this information with each other. And we come together with the different skills that we have. I need Steve, because Steve has production uh, experience. 
I need to create a storyline within my game. I go to Steve. Steve, I need to build a storyline. How can you assist me, Steve? Steve says, you need a writer. You need this. I'll help you here and here and here and here. I've been in productions and this and this and this. You when you're looking at anyone creating a movie, hi, can I create a game of your movie? Oh, I see you did a, 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 a show for Mzanti uh, Magic. Can I create a game uh, of your movie that you've done? Hey, I see you have a great education program. Can, can, can I gamify your program? That is where the economy is, comrades. And I think we shouldn't, we shouldn't take this lightly. It's a very serious thing. So, Steve, I think I'll end it for now so I don't get too carried away because, you know, the, 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 what we spoke about, I think what we can do is wrap it around the utilization of our phones to achieve these things. Although we can't create content, yes, for YouTube. Sorry, we can't create content for, say, Netflix. But with our phones, we can create content for YouTube. With our phones, we still can create educational programs. Because if I'm 16 years old, uh, I'll just stop sharing this, Steve, and then we can get into um, we can get into our conversation. I'll stop share. Uh, and then let me, let me just cancel my spotlight, Steve. So when we chat, um, I don't know if you... Yes, I'm ready. So, so Steve, um, just sorry, let me just... Um, uh, hey, today I'm alone. There we go. So, Steve, I think then how we can drive this conversation is let's look at this thing um, in terms of what we've been talking about today, all right? This thing that most of us have, okay? Uh, I, have a, I have a cell phone. Chances are I have an Android tablet and uh, I don't know what's happening now. I have this. How am I, how can I make money with this? With the skills that I have within ICT, within content creation. I think then it becomes interesting because we, as today is telecom, uh, Telecommunications Day uh, and Information Society Day, is let's, 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 let's circle the conversation around this, this device. So we don't complicate things because today is fast forward. Everybody has this device. Steve, you have it. In your household, I'm sure there's a couple of these devices. How can we now move forward? Let's talk about content creation with this beautiful device. Thanks, Steve. I think I'll give you the floor. Thanks, Dennis. So I've, I've got a couple of questions because it's interesting and I've got a little story to tell as well. Awesome. Um, being from KwaZulu-Natal, a few years ago, there was a boy at Marisburg College. He was at school in Standard 8 or Standard 9, um, and he created a game. That game was then uh, uploaded onto Google. Uh, into the Play Store, and it was bought, um, and he was paid just over two million rand for the rights for his game. So that's a 16-year-old boy wow. who made two million, um, and it's a game changer. You're at school, you've got two million, um, and this is, you know, a boy. Uh, you know, we're in a different world now. Um, my children only know how to use a tablet and they know how to go onto it. They know how to install the games they want to play. Um, so we're looking at our children being a different sort of way of doing things than what you and I are used to. We're old school. We still use our laptops. Um, we still like to physically touch something. So it's an interesting way to think that if we just stop and pause and watch our children a little bit, um, we might get some more fresh ideas and content of games and what to create that could potentially work. But so that's my one thing is just to talk about that and say, well, the opportunity is to do this and the youth are definitely driving it. But the other thing is, is, is that from your slides earlier, we definitely seeing that there is the ability to create local games that has the potential to be uh, growth within South Africa or worldwide. And if we create something that's really special, um, it could potentially burst the bubble and run. Dennis, are you still there? Uh, thanks, thanks, Steve. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you know, you get distracted. People want to find out how can I come into the group? How can I come into the group? Uh, tell them, follow the link and click in. 
Steve, that okay. story is the most amazing story because even me, I've I've never seen even within a year as an SMME two million rand. I know how That's to do three D, Steve. I know how to do three D, right? I know how to animate. I'm mad at myself now that I, I I haven't I haven't created a game, and the reason why I want to I don't want to just talk the talk. I've made a pact that I've downloaded because I'm able to, and I'm using the little privileges that I have, the little money that I have. I bought a couple of 200 and courses and Udemy to learn how to create games in Unity. I'm gonna use my 3D skills, I'm using my animation skills, and I'm using my basic coding skills. So I'll be learning C Sharp to build games now. And I'm gonna start very small. I'm not competing with the big companies. And I, 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 I'm so inspired by a story that someone in standard, standard 80 is grade 10, right? <laughs> so grade someone 10. in grade 10, <laughs> You know, Steve, you're showing our age now, you know? <laughs> and the fact that I can translate it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in standard eight, grade 10, can make two million. A boy in KZN, Peter Maritzburg. Peter Maritzburg. I think that story is so inspiring that someone from Mandeni, someone from Carltonville in, 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 in Gauteng, in Zierast in the Northwest would be able to create and be able to contribute to the economy. And because he contributed to the economy by creating the game, although he wasn't thinking about how much money can I make, he was saying, I have an idea and I'll do whatever it takes for me to build my idea and I'm gonna take it to market. What happened after that wasn't really part of his plan. So I think it's an inspiring story for everybody. And that's why I mentioned the youth. I mentioned women. It's like bridging that digital device, that the divide is important because it's the one that once the, 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 the divide has been bridged, it evens out the playing field. Technology continuously evens out the playing field. And that's why a 16-year-old boy from KwaZulu Natal in Peter Marisburg could make 2 million rand like that. That shows that we're not talking about things that don't exist. We're talking about things that do exist. And as part of fast forward, we are saying, tomorrow, go out, buy a Udemy course, 150 rand, 200 rand, 300 rand, Learn how to build mobile games. Build mobile games, publish the game, and see what happens. Tell your friends in school. Tell your friends in varsity. Tell your friends at work. Uh, uh, if you have a budget, create a, a studio. You know? So there's so many levels that you can enter, and we can impact the economy by having younger people becoming millionaires at a younger age, quicker, faster than ever before. Because Steve, remember, as I, when I opened, what we said, the people who are building on top of connectivity are the new economic drivers. Although I mentioned big names, the Ubers and so forth, the fact that he had connectivity, and that's why the connectivity conversation never dies. The fact that he had connectivity, people could see his game, download it and play it. And that's the most important thing. So I think it's very inspiring. Yes, yes, Steve. I, mean? I, I, I agree with you there. Connectivity changes everything. Um, Angry Birds, if you look at that, created in 2010 and is still a popular game. Imagine the next game like Angry Birds coming out of Umlazi for exactly. Africa. Yes. Being the game that gets played. I mean, we rely off our youth to look at it and say, you know what, let's take this game and translate it into a game that can be played on mobile. Yes. And, and even take, outside, something, yeah, take something African and make it digital. Exactly. And that's where we can start. And the beauty of it, Steve, off of what you were saying, is because now you have connectivity, if your friend is able to de develop a game or you have six friends who have developed games and you don't have the technical ability, but you're a great showman 
or show person, right? You're, you're also a 16-year-old girl who likes these games, uh, and you in Umlaz, in Guamash, you now can review your friends' games and say, hey, I've, you can start your channel. You start your channel of uh, 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 game players and say, hey, this one is developed by my friend. This is my YouTube channel. Today, we're talking about the level of the game. We're talking about the gameplay. We're talking about the character design in the game. We're talking about the design level, the complexity, the simplicity, becoming an influencer. So Steve, you're talking about being an influencer. That also, of course, you can generate income from that because then people will see the popularity of your platform and be able to now uh, want to maybe sponsor your platform and say, hey, can we have our product there? How much would you charge us to run an ad before your, 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 your review uh, goes on? Because you're talking about someone who is doing reviews. I think the president has joined us. Uh, very exciting. Um, I praise you in. Yeah. Okay. Yes, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dennis and Steve. And I think to all the viewers that are participating now, watching us online, and those that will be watching after this, uh, I'd like to say thank you for taking the time to join this webinar. Very exciting and very interesting. I've been listening in very tentatively, my brother Steve and Kurt. And I think that, uh, you know, as we were talking, um, Hey, the press, the press is sounding like a press. Your, your voice is breaking. South Africa, you don't know what else international telecom ensuring that we, 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 as the hello, you back, press your, your voice is good, your connection is good. Okay, yeah, so. We, these are the days that we should be calling those people to account, the youth, the women, and all the SMMEs are supposed today, no celebration. We're supposed to be calling them to account. They're supposed to be coming to platforms here and explaining to us why are our people still not connected. Why are there there's so many opportunities that are out there that our people can't reach because there's no connectivity? We should be even worse, more so now, calling them to account and saying, why are our children deprived? from education because there's no connectivity because they have not their child. not releasing CDs. But why have you released Spectrum for your Vodacoms and MTNs and yet we're not seeing the free data? We should be calling them to account and saying, why is it that there are plants that are open that manufacture cell phones here in South Africa that we don't have our own cell phone that is cost effective? Why are the laptops at Mastic not given to schools for free? It's 3,000 rand, a laptop. But we are quick to make celebrations and spend monies in celebrating events and calling people to ICC and everywhere else to celebrate what? We have nothing to celebrate, and these are realities. And we must stop this thing of celebrating. The Youth on Youth Month should be calling government and every one of us to account and say, why have you failed us? Why is the future so grim and why is the future so dark to us? Why are we not connected as a youth? Women on women's man should be calling on government saying, why haven't we received, why don't we have 50, 50 in the on this telecom? And likewise with the whole of government spend. These are the kind of things that we should be doing. And as we're sitting on lockdown, it's time for us to change and it's time for us to think differently and we need to fast forward. Let's stop celebrations. Let's call them to account. Let it be the day, a guillotine day. So if you are a minister of telecoms, you must know that telecoms day is where you are called to the public to account and say, why have you failed? Or tell us what you have achieved. If you are a minister of sport, or if you're a minister of youth or woman, on that day, you should be called to account. And we are calling on everyone. Ikasa, we are calling Ikasa to account and say, today we have nothing to celebrate. Celebrate it alone, because we've achieved nothing. DTPS, we've achieved nothing. You, we can clearly say with SA Connected, at least there is something that you, have, that you have achieved. So that is something, but it's not for celebration. 
we should be saying what next from there. Ikasa, no celebration. Giving spectrum to the people that have already without giving SMMEs access to spectrum and the one and without lifting mon the monitorium on uh, individual licenses so that our people can connect, uh, the, uh, connect our people. There's nothing to celebrate, really. And we should be embarrassed that we are calling this a celebration day. Internationally, you're having the UK still spending on broadband rollout all over the all over the world. Everyone is spending. We are not. We are not. Eastern Cape has taken out a tender and given to Caesar a multi-million rand tender for some system for education and this and that without connectivity. Come on, guys, this is a joke. It's a serious joke. We have nothing to celebrate, Dennis. We have nothing to celebrate, Steve. Yet you guys are sitting in the creative industry that can actually make a huge impact and a huge difference in this internet TV, uh, blogging, you name it, social media advertising, gaming, rotoscoping, rotor trimming, film production. There is so much that can be done in this country, but the data is too expensive and the thing we can do about it because we succumb ourselves to the big four, the big five, for whatever they call themselves, big what what. We have absolutely, absolutely nothing to celebrate. And that is a sad reality. And I see Matlovu is, uh, is, is here, Dennis, as part of the attendees. And I would like people that are in the sector right down in there to, to, to share with us. And I see there's some people that are in the youth as well. I think that they should come onto the panel and they should share. We want to hear hard truth. And that is what Fast Forward is all about. We're saying gloves off and we're saying this, we're not begging anyone. And we're not here to talk sweet and to smooth, to, to smooth talk. And this is what PBICT is all about. We're not here to beg, but we're here for the truth. So thank you very much, uh, Dennis and Steve. Thank you, President. Praise as always. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for emphasizing the importance of um, uh, connectivity and also looking at the, the, the conditions of uh, of just connectivity as totality and all the custodians of connectivity uh, under government. Um, but very, very, it's, it's, it's very insightful for you to be able to highlight these things. And everybody listening takes this, should be taking this serious. Everybody in the DTPS, uh, um, Santec, um, ICASA, everybody working there should really, really start taking this conversation serious. And not only looking at the big organizations, they're not going to be the answers uh, 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 for us. As you said, Prez, um, we must be able to give connectivity to ourselves because we understand our problems. We have a panelist that we just brought forward, Simpiwe uh, Ngema, we call Mandlo He is in the telecom space. So with the spirit of not really celebrating the day today, um, uh, 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 he posted something very important, and I thought instead of reading it, uh, allow him to articulate it. Um, so, Mandogovu, um, I'll give you the floor. Um, I think you can enable your mic. Um, yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, lovely, lovely. Thanks, Mandogovu. You can go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, sorry, I didn't see this Zoom webinar in time, but uh, I'm hoping that. I was able to catch some glimpse of what you guys are talking about because I had Steve, you know, what pushed me mostly, I had Steve uh, talking about a guy that was actually, uh, that developed something at uh, a very early age and then he, he managed to sell that product by 2 million rand or something. So um, whatever President has just said now, that's true. Um, but what I think that needs to be done, um, especially to our young fellow youth um i'm beating myself too because i spent a lot of time um in corporate i should have maybe um uh, uh, get out there soon enough but then it's it's not wasted because then you get an experience and then you get to know who's doing what where um so i i i, I think um we actually uh by nature because we are underprivileged, uh, we we tend to chase more money than and than do reality things. 
of which that is, is much important. Money is important because we, we have gap to fill, we have families to feed, we have this and that and that. Uh, but in reality, if, if we don't teach our generation to start doing things now, so that in the near future they can have a better standing in terms of getting uh, whatever uh, that is uh, as a product that can be in commercial viable, so then we, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. So now what I think that is important is that whoever that has skills of doing anything, don't think about money, just do it. Just do it and then take it to the market. If it has to be used for free, let it be. Because um, as I have commented that I've, I was just reading another article that uh, um, Facebook has just bought another content uh, provider. I think it's starting with G, I can't remember the name. But that content provider, it didn't have any value attached to it. It was not on sale. Facebook approached that contract because it had about 300 million users. So you can imagine uh, that it was offered for free. People were not even subscribing to it. It was just the usage in inter interaction. So. Facebook bought it because of a data, because of access to the data, because of access to the users, because they want always to share the content and make money through advertising. The more people they have on their platform, the more they can advertise and, and make sure that they get money of the value, because if it's about numbers, if you, if you want to advertise on Facebook platform, you need to get people to see your advert so that they can do whatever uh, that you are promoting or that you are advertising. So this this is about numbers. So what I'm saying is that the youth of today, they need to start, especially the SMMEs, they need to start building things that is going to be on the platform because it's going to be having a value attached to it. Once your product has a value attached to it, then you can be able to negotiate and sell. You can even use your, your value, like for instance, ER, uh, ERP system, you can develop ERP system and offer to your very same SMMs to use it for free. Why are you doing that? Because you have to create the value so that when you go to the market, you have this value attached to it to say, my product can do A, B, C, and D. It's very difficult in nowadays to launch any product if you don't have money. You need money to launch product because then you need to take it to the to the up to the scale that that thing costs money but if you're building steady but surely then eventually you will have the product that is actually talking to the larger scale of the market so coming to think of uh, president i hope you're still here coming to take into the areas where we think that we need to own something is that by saying let's put our heads together um, if let's say you want to be a network builder or you want to own a network First and foremost, we cannot talk if you don't have a, 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 a one of the prerequisite to own the network. If you don't have a license to own that particular network, we cannot talk. So the talk will be, how can we help our SMMEs that want to have network to get these licenses, you know, to build a network for themselves? You know, because once you have that, then you can say, um, we are fighting for people that have a, uh, that we want to take it to the next level to be able to build a network. Now, if you say people, they need to get a spectrum and then they will look around and say, yes, we understand that you need to get a, a, a spectrum, but you don't fundamentally um, uh, present that you are in this sector because you've got nothing to show. You know, you, you only see your name, uh, Madlog of Telecom, we know that you're doing APC, your profile saying that you 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 skilled in this way. But do you have anything that we can take forward and say, okay, um, I want to build a network in Josini now, I want to fiber the whole of Josini. Um, then do you have something that we can lead into that? But but those are bits and pieces that we can maybe try and sit down and figure it out. How can we help people to be more advanced as going forward to actually take this because we can we can really talk about people that are doing a lot of things i know government doing a lot of things and then they have no choice because we have been raised our hands as to to say 
hear what we have, we want you to assist in this manner. So let's start and collecting something that we might have and say, we have this and that. So guys, help us here and here. So I know they're not going to jump and help us. But if we can be seen moving a little bit of blocks, right? They know that we are about, if we're moving a little bit of blocks on the wall, they know that eventually this wall is going to collapse. They can foresee that we are on to something. So that's my little bit of an advice. Thank you very much, Chair. Yo, thank you very much, Simpiwe. Uh, Mandlogov, as we call you. That's how we know you. So that's very, very inspiring. Uh, <clears throat> earlier on, when I was speaking with Steve, um, I, uh, there's two uh, group of people that I spoke of. One was a youth. And uh, Mandlogov, you spoke on that. And I'm very happy with that. And two was women. You see, transformation is a very important thing because it's not only for organizations and companies. It needs to be something within us also that if we're feeling marginalized as people of color, as a specific gender, we need to create that opportunity to talk about transformation in many different facets. Uh, I'm going to bring someone else to, to comment on transformation and get her take on it. Um, we have a comrade here, uh, Minky Tulo. She is uh, part of the BEE Council. And you know, BEE is a very serious transformation driver to correct and even now the playing field for us. So uh, Minky, uh, if you could join us, if you can enable your mic, you, you are, you, you're able to do that and Hi, your Dennis. video if you want to, and then uh, you can come in and, and, and then uh, run mm -hmm. us through, uh, how can we fast forward this uh, uh, transformation talk uh, and how can we see transformation as a way to fast forward uh, uh, e economic inclusion and economic change and to uh, eventually tell we are the real drivers of the economy. Thanks, Minky. Okay, hi, Dennis. Thanks, thanks for the platform and thanks for the invitation. Uh, before I get into the transformation thing, I think I just, listening to yourself and Steve, I just wanted to, to kind of add on and put context to a couple of things. So my background really is in film, television, broadcasting, and multiple, uh, multi-platform broadcasting, including VOD and linear break broadcasting and so, et cetera. So just to go back to Steve's presentation, I've, I've also been I've also worked with the, the the film commission in 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 Natal, and it is quite true that, for instance, we've had opportunities to have the film industry go back into shooting. However, it is under still uh, a come, except some limitations or constraints because it's at this point, for instance, you'd have fifty people altogether permitted to be on set, including the cast, the crew, um, and when you look at that sector, that depending on what format you're running and uh, for what platform, it quite it can be a limited um, number of people than what we use, especially also for the international market. But bringing in the likes of Unreal, in fact, I'm, 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 I'm doing, um, I'm working closely with the guys at Unreal, who uh, at first, at, at their core, really, they're a gaming uh, production company, but you've seen how you've seen how they've started migrating into film. And what is interesting for open um, sources like that is that we start to see virtual locations being created, right? Which will basically transform um, how we shoot production even in, in, in that context. Um, so uh, when we talk about post COVID, for me, it's, it's, it's really, we need to look at uh, uh, skills transformation as one of the core. In fact, the skills that are required within the gaming and, and film industry in this sector, even the, the broadcasting sector is, is way ahead and more advanced than what our current uh, academic institutions are, are providing, right? Um, and besides the cost limitations of accessing the market, we're also going to have challenges of um, participating in the in, 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 in the global market if we only validate um, 
uh, skills according to university accreditations and, and, and the likes, right? Because we have, we probably, we, we've seen examples of people who are skilled, even if they don't necessarily have an academic qualification. So, and, I, and, and this also leads to the fact that when we talk, talk transformation, right? The first kind of things that people also limited to is that you must have a, an MBA, you must have all these things that already also um, limits participation from the youth, as you've said. It limits people who are actually technically well more advanced than <laughs> some of the people that are academically credited, right? Uh, across youth, across gender. And also, uh, like uh, the president was saying, it is because of the high costs that it becomes in, in difficult to enter the market, whether it's from a data cost, whether it's from a broadcasting platform cost. We know that in broadcasting, for instance, the Netflix is being VOD and the Showmaxes are in the market. They are broadcasting platforms. Um, however, to own a broadcasting platform is a very expensive exercise. Hence, you've had the likes of Telcom trying to come into the market. That wasn't successful. I myself worked for Econet, Mark, uh, Econet Group, which had Quesa Media. It, it is an, a highly expensive. And if you think of the amount of um, broadcasters we have in the market, you, you might start asking yourself, why haven't they participated in in that so of course the likes of youtube then brings in um, a new model uh, where people can actually shoot like you're saying from cell phones then they're able to to earn a couple of revenue from the advertising the question is also if you look at the red revenue model how many followers and how many hits and all of those do you have to to hit before you as the creator and you as the person holding the skills is able to earn from it, right? What we've also seen across broadcasting during COVID is a lot of advertising has pulled out. Um, and I'm, I'm talking about radio, uh, maybe television is more benefiting, maybe the likes of YouTube is, is benefiting. Um, however, things like AVOD are still suffering because advertisers are one saying, why are we advertising products that people cannot access? People are locked down. So how, if, even if you have a huge following, uh, people are not going to, so we also need to kind of think about how do you revolutionize and change advertising at, which sits at the core of all these sectors really, right? Everybody wants inform, uh, information about us as, as participants, as, as, as citizens, and hence you'd have Facebook buying that platform um, because they have so much following so that they can use advertising. So if advertising is at the core of it, we must also be asking ourselves, how do we then really look at how advertising benefits everyone much more closer to the creatives than the platform owners? Um, so I think another thing to kind of think about when it comes to, to transformation really is is this, the scores really, and how do, how do we then measure that? There has, there has also been a lot of, of push where there is request for the ICT, uh, ICT sector to take mandatory resources to contribute to triple BE, for instance, which I think that will damage the people right at the bottom of the food chain who we're actually trying to empower. Um, and we've also had engagements with, with uh, some of the bigger players who would say, would love to have uh, triple BE partners. However, the, the, the size of our organization and the kind of skills that we would need to, to, for them to be able to carry the work, we would have to go and retrain them and we'd have to re-incubate their own businesses as independent uh, smaller businesses. In some cases, it has worked because you have other companies who actually say, we will go and actually invest in, in training and, up, up, and, and basically resourcing you as a service provider so that in the long term, you become a service provider and BEE partners. And yeah, I guess those, those are the kind of things that we, we need to, to talk about because at the level of saying you're going to have a BEE partner who is going to 
uh, be a service provider at the very bottom of the value chain. Let's take a content uh, creation point of view. We have a lot of filmmakers pumping films, but how many, may, man, how many of those filmmakers are actually making lucrative money um, in, in, in the ecosystem versus what the platform owners are actually, are actually, uh, actually making? So uh, I think the quantification of, of what really contributes to transformation needs to be relooked. And that's, that's my two cents for now. Well, thank you very much, uh, Minky. And uh, the insight that you've given is very, uh, is very important that we receive this type of information and we, we, we learn how to digest it properly because the, the issues that you talk about have hurt a lot of friends of mine who are in content creation themselves, who are filmmakers, who are directors, who are uh, um, cinematographers, uh, editors who don't have enough work uh, because you know uh, the, the filmmaking uh, studios or, or people can't move as fast as they want to. You find someone's making a short movie, one short movie a year, two short movies a year, uh, having to, to sell it to a platform for a few hundred thousand, their platform makes generates millions in that slot um, in advertising revenue. So it's very interesting that we now can start thinking about how can we start re-looking advertising and also looking at product placement as a means of advertising too. So right now, mm -hmm. say Avon cannot advertise during lockdown and during a pandemic, but a movie can have a beauty scene and they can have a permanent adver uh, ad advertisement in a movie, which gives them better value over a long time, because we've seen this with Audi and Chevrolet in big blockbusters like Transformers. Uh, and I think that advertising agencies and media placing agencies and the, the, the strategy person within the organization, uh, uh, whether it's an MTN or whoever it is, they need to start opening up in the marketing, uh, all the guys in communication, right? They need to start opening their minds up to alternative advertising methods outside of uh, uh, doing um, social media advertising by boosting and you know paying, uh, having paid adver uh, advertisements, is where they look at inbound product placement ad uh, advertising that has been happening for music videos for a very long time. But in movies in South Africa, I don't think there's very purposeful advertising happening within that in the form of uh, a product placement. Because I think partnering up with a brand to create a movie helps you generate revenue also. Um, it's not only a one-sided thing. So, Miki, I'll just uh, allow you to weigh in on that also. Yeah. So, Dennis, quite quite correctly. So, also just to put context, why a platform like the the AVOD platforms would also be suffering. Um, it, it's also because you must remember again, we go back to data costs. Uh, most people, especially in in South Africa, in the context of Africa, actually access most of this AVOD content by download, downloading it while they're at work or by basically viewing it mostly when they're at work because of it's expensive. So they, they're not necessarily using that data. So we've, we've also seen um, players like ViewClip who are able to, to go beyond 2 million within six, uh, uh, 2 million subscribers within, within about six months of being in the market. However, they're also seeing a drop because people are not at work, they're not using the free data that would be there, right? And when it comes to advertising, it's also, unfortunately, it's not only a, 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 a responsibility on, or something that the advertising agencies themselves can only deal with, because currently, our, in, when you look at broadcasting, because the airtime belongs to the broadcaster, if an ad, Basically, the, the broadcasters would not allow for product placement without um, the, the, the advert obviously paying for, for the space to broadcast. 
So at some point we had a lot of shows, which I think we still have a little bit of, which were called advertiser funded production. The reason that model couldn't work as well is because production, film production company was saying, for me to own my IP so that I can get more money to make, so I can make more money in the long run, I will then go find um, finance to fill in my content and I'll go to an advertiser probably. The bread advertiser and the content creator go to a broadcast and says, right, we've got our own money to create the film, but we've got this brand that's associated. So can we get this spot um, and then we can own the IP? Unfortunately, the broadcaster says the platform is mine. If you, the advertiser or the commercial brand is coming on board, you then need to pay for the production com- uh, the production of the, of, of, of the film or the TV series and also place ads at an, a separate and additional cost. Uh, Mickey, you still there? Okay, I, I think uh, maybe Mickey is having connection problems. Uh, we'll just wait for it to come back. But uh, uh, touching on uh, what she's been talking about. So, um, uh, I, I also just slight, I slightly misheard her. Uh, who's trying to speak? Fraser, that you? Uh, yes, uh, it's G. Yeah, I think uh, SG, may I come in with your permission? Yes, please, please come in. Yeah, yes, I think all this is all well and good. And to me, thank you. What, what, what we need to do, I always believe in being practical SG, right? Now, I want to make an example, and we, I, I like the fact that we, we're busy talking. I'm not a master in, and I don't know much about, but it's an idea that we've always had. And it's an idea that says that you have youth that have a 1,000 followers, you have youth that have 100,000 followers, sorry, 30,000, 20,000 and those things. Now, government has a youth program that is a, whether it's a youth celebration month. Uh, but what is difficult with saying that we are looking for those people with on Instagram, on Facebook, and just with 100,000 followers to send this message and to talk this with youth. But yet we have very, very, very funny public engagement platforms. One of the key things of government is public participation. But we can't think beyond where we are stuck, the normal. We think so yesterday. We think so day before yesterday. We think so 10 years back. Now, these are the kind of things that should be, that, that should be coming forward. And these are the kind of things that should be doing. How much, what's, a, what's another better model? Now, this COVID and this lockdown has taught us that I think a municipality wants to advertise something. There are people at a ward, at every ward. If a municipality has 12 wards, in that ward, you have people that into social media, engage people like that and pay them. You've just created employment. You've just created the people that, that opportunity. Why is it that in every ward we do not have people that those put the, the billboards right now? Why can't in the ward we encourage and we, you, NYDA funds the youth, the woman funding agency funds women specifically to have digital billboards so that Madlogovo can provide connectivity so that Dennis can create uh, the, the facility and a platform for them to do the marketing so that the Steve can come and create those adverts. And you are talking to the people from that ward with that culture, those people, and not sending a generic message. Why can we not do those things? Government spends a lot of money. It's not, it's not that we're saying there's no money. There is money. How much money does Standard Bank pay to send a generic message? 
whereas they can start sending specific messages. We are going to have a striving like the past. We need think people that think 40 years into the future, not even people that think today, because thinking today is still a problem. Thinking yesterday is even worse. These are the kind of things that we should be saying. And if we want to fast forward, let us change the way in which we do things. Let us raise economies, uh, develop economies in the world, every economy across the STEMI platform. Let's create those economies. Let the people in every world be the one that are driving the opportunity creation, the wealth creation, so that with the local, with the, with the localization of the economies, the localization of the money, it's the only way in which we can fast forward and we can actually see and make a real change to the people. But everything again comes to something that we should not celebrate in this country until we, we have all the people connected and we've achieved universal services, and that is telecommunication. It comes to one thing, we have failed to connect our people. And yet we have given licenses, we have given uh, to your MTNs, your Vodacoms and whoever, all these webs that are running around, that are installing and putting connectivities, all these people that are digging the trenches and putting fiber, all these places. But today, description of saying why and how you have failed us. So all of things, the content, the advertising, everything comes to that. If you are making a movie, a, a Dennis, and whether you're making a cartoon or you're making whatever it is that you, that, that you are making, and you want to talk to someone that is in Eastern Cape, because you need to understand the rich culture of the Corsa, or you're someone in KZN because you want to understand how the Zulus do a particular thing. How are you going to do it? I'm all the way. But those are the people that have that content to go to job or job. There's opportunities that are there. And you're saying that, oh, film and production, we want to build a recording studio in KZN. Or you want to have, to, to, to have a, a movie production studio in KZN. By the way, it's the most beautiful way and the best place to have such a thing. You have opportunities that come in and they make big proposals, talk big English, and make funny deals and meeting Cubanas and all of those things and just, just ruin everything. And it's time for those people to stop and, to, and those people need to be exposed. We need to start platforms where we expose such things and we start by talking facts. And I like the way that now we've taken off and it's talking as individuals here, representing the people that are suffering. And this is what it is. Madlogovu, very well put. And this is what Fast Forward is all about. Thank you very much, uh, SG. Thank you very much, Prez. Uh, that was, yeah, always uh, in inspiring and thought-provoking. And I think um, this uh, uh, the fast forward uh, is for people to know, this is your brainchild um, because we, we, we in a, a rhetoric loop and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to, to, to be part of this particular platform and excited to continuously invite people so we can stop the rhetoric uh, uh, um, approach and start the proactive approach. Um, we've identified on top of, just to support things that you're saying, Prez, is that we have identified that government is, has to play a role. They have no choice because they are able, they're the biggest buyers. They have to play a role. And the wasteful expenditure can now go into places that are more proactive. The money can go into places where now you'd be able to get people to become economic drivers and utilize in economic drivers, for whether they're creating content, whether they're creating uh, 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 interactive uh, platforms, uh, whether it's connectivity, uh, and rightfully so. We, today, we can't celebrate communications um, and information society day. We can't celebrate it because we, we haven't connected our people and that is a sentiment. And, um, you know, just uh, 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 on 
what's being said, part of fast forward as we're talking about um, uh, con the, the content creator space, is that there are two song centers and mushrooming hubs, tech hubs and those type of things. As part of the fast forward thinking, let's use them to bring people on board who are able to do things, to do things there. And so those places are not white elephants. Because if hubs are mushrooming everywhere, and they don't have a proper use. We still continue with thinking of yesterday as you so eloquently put it, Chris. So we say, let's start with something small. Like how can we create an economy, sorry. How can we create an economy with this thing? Content creators, how can we create a stable economy with this thing? Whether I'm shooting movies, whether I'm allowing my little sister who loves acting to have an acting role in a, how can I use this? And eventually we'll have more app developers who will allow us to edit a complete production in this thing. This will eventually be a full film studio in here for someone who's starting. We're not saying that you'll be able to create a, 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 a Queen Sono or whatever, but we're saying here tomorrow, how can we start using this that we have in our pockets to be an economic driver, to create content, to create games, to create an economy? Yes, it's, uh, the, the, the YouTube money is slow, but how can we start using this? It's simple. We just need to start. That's what the session is about. We need to start. You've never shot a film on a phone before. Tomorrow, pick up your phone and start shooting a film. You've never uh, uh, written a script before and you have an acumen for writing. You can p write a small script, make a five minute movie, make a 10 minute movie with your cell phone. Find out if there are apps that allow you to edit your video, learn how to edit, learn on the job. That's the thing. That's how you get accelerated. Mickey was talking about skills where there's uh, people who, have, who are more advanced than people who are degrees, masters, and uh, 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 any qualification holders. Why? Trial and error. Pick this thing up tomorrow. Start making a movie. Speak to your little cousin. Speak to your other cousin. Speak to your sisters, to your aunt, your uncle. Start making content today with this thing here. With this thing. You love making movies. Stop complaining that you don't have this camera, you don't have a red or whatever. Use this thing here. Whether you have a whatever brand it is with a however bad camera it has. Start somewhere. The crazy thing is I watched a um, I watched a movie on Netflix a couple of days ago because uh, I live in a, in a haves area, although I'm not part of the haves as yet. I'm working very hard to be a have and I, I think there's no shame in being a have because that's what we're fighting for. And I realized that I've seen a short version of this movie almost four years before I watched this movie. These guys created a 10 minute sci-fi movie that took four years for adoption. And it was adopted into becoming a Netflix movie. That's the most, that's the craziest thing. Yeah, uh, in, in, the, in, the content, in, the, in the chat here, I know uh, one of our comrades in Jabulo, uh, just talking about games, right? Because ideas, I don't think we're short of ideas, we have things, and it's just about digitizing them, right? Did someone say, uh, Unjabulo Mshong un says, Imagine having uh hey, 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 hey. engage in eh? I hope I, I pronounced it right. Engage in eh? Yeah, engage. Yes, imagine having engage digitally, you know. So we we already have um laba laba and I play sometimes though uh, on the computer. Uh they keep robbing me, you know, but what he's talking about is indigenous games. How can we take our local games? How can we now create them? By just starting. Start. Find out which game platform can I use? And how can I use that game platform to develop what I need to? Do your research and just start. But the important thing is start. Unity is free to download. Just download it and start. Build a game. Unreal in them. Build a game. All of these platforms, even if it's a purely online one, 
if you have access to a constant, a stable uh, uh, access to the internet, build. The idea is you need to fast forward your thinking. Let's stop thinking about yesterday. Let's stop thinking about today. Let's constantly be in tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, next decade. That's where we should continuously be. As the president has said, we need to stop thinking about yesterday and today. We need to be in the future. Also, there's a rising, there's a rising problem that we have in the disease of young people having access to all of these things. But all they do is sit and just watch their TV and they sit and just play games. They're not generating any income. Stopping lazy, youth stopping lazy. Stop complaining. You need to start creating. You know a friend? Bring him to your place. Start your studio from the garage at home, from the spare room at home, from the computer room at home, if you have it. If you have those facilities, you have a friend who's talented in something, bring them on board, come together. We need to fast forward. You understand? So when it's time now for us to start going into, now speaking to government and so forth, we've shown them that we can do it. We're not gonna meet at the Cubanas and all of that stuff. You're saying we can do it, we need extra support. Come on board and help us. You're not asking them, you're giving them a directive as a public. We are custodians as the people of the country. Of, we are custod we are the, the, sorry, the beneficiaries. They are the custodians. We are the beneficiaries to these funds. So if there's a youth fund and you're a youth, you are a beneficiary. And if you have something solid, you shouldn't be a friend of a, a, a admitted Cubana to, to do deals, no. Because you can do it, you should be able to do it. And that's the important thing. This is a fast forward way of thinking. But we need to, as uh, 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 our uh, comrade Mandla Wolfo said, we need to get out and do it. You know, we need to just get out and do it. As uh, Steve said also uh, in, in the thing, we need to get out and do it. So uh, I, I don't know if there's any comments, uh, if there's anything on social media that we can address, if there's any questions. And if anyone else wanna say something, maybe you can raise your hand. Uh, if not, I think maybe uh, Steve, if you have any last words, and then we'll end off with the uh, praise if he's still with us, uh, we can request him to just have a few closing words with regards to this fast forward session. Um, it's a super workshop. Fast forward is really just a super workshop. So uh, Steve, are you still here? I am still here, yes. Any, any last words from your side, Steve? Uh, yes, I think I think we need to look at two things. Um, the economy for us, we know we've gone to junk status. That means that outside companies like India, we, we mentioned rotoscoping and, and, and President mentioned rotoscoping. Um, where the value of, of uh, money is low, um, the, the ability to outsource solutions and everything like that become quite um, quite easy to do. So outsourcing your work from another country um, and doing work for them and making in dollars uh, becomes quite feasible. This is in programming as well. Um, creating games, you work for overseas game companies. Um, all of those options are there. I, I think, you know, just from a program uh, point of view, programmers could look at a uh, a couple of companies. One of them that comes to mind is a company called Clevertech that pays in US dollars. These are the opportunities we can seize now and use overseas currency to help us locally. Uh, I won't get too deep in this because I know we're going to be able to expand on this at a later stage. Um, but I'd like to thank everyone um, uh, for their questions and comments and everything um, and thank the, the, the audience. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Steve, uh, I definitely agree with you. I think the, the, we, we can largely talk about maybe uh, have a, a, a discussion on uh, visual effects and how us how it could affect us. Uh, and obviously we're, we're, uh, we'll yet again, connectivity being the bedrock of everything is that we are able to become a contributor in the visual effects global uh, market as South Africa and as Africa, as you have put it, that simple things like um, rotoscoping and we'll expand on what rotoscoping is and how you can be a professional rotoscoper because it's labor intensive. 
that means that you'll have hours and hours of work. So I think that's another subject definitely we need to look at uh, and, 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 and look at uh, what are the low hanging fruits uh, and how can we, we move forward in that. So we, I think we'll find the appropriate place for it. Maybe we do a workshop or we bring it over here to fast forward. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you, Steve. Thanks for your contribution. Um, any, if you're still with us, uh, any closing words? I was just typing something. Okay, the last word to say, guys, thank you very much for this information sharing and engagement. But I believe that if we have to do it, we need to probably encourage people to come forward and see as experienced guys, how can we help uh, them to take whatever ideas to move them forward? Thank you, because that's what we have to do. We need to help the young ones. We, we, we've lived the journey. And we know there are difficulties, but if we can collaborate and bring the contents onto it and say, you're trying to do this, let us help you identify your weaknesses and move forward so that it may probably breathe a business out of it. So that's so be it. Let's, let's, let's help youngsters to actually with dreams and passion to realize their dreams now. Thank you. Thank you, Mandelgov. Uh, also, but look over just to slightly add on what you're saying, boot camps are definitely the way for us to move forward. So we definitely have to look at boot camps and how can we have accelerated boot camps that create strong results. So if someone is interested, but they don't have the foundational knowledge, they come to Mandlogovo. Mandlogovo holds a boot camp every two weeks, uh, whatever. Uh, we need to find that support. So if Mandogovu could find a support structure so he can do this, or parents are able to afford that little, that will be able to pay him to, to, to come onto a boot camp. We do boot camps and everybody else, on, on, on Jabolo, do boot camps on surveillance and security, those type of things. Steven him helping us with boot, boot camps. So, I mean, I already have a boot camp set up for branding, top to bottom, full stack branding boot camps that I'd love to do. Uh, in universities and other places, but at, uh, at boot camps, I think definitely. Um, and let me see. Uh, our chairperson is here. Uh, a chair. Um, off of what's being said today, um, uh, do you would you like to weigh in and just have something to uh, comment uh, as we close in the session? Well, no. Uh, thank you very much, uh, GS. I think. Uh, following the, the discussion, and um, that's why I invited um, one of our councillors, uh, Councillor Minky, to come and elaborate because she's actively she's active in the space. And I think from an entry perspective, um, there is a lot of barriers um, that we still need to address. It's almost like everything is a fight for anything. So I think um, today's session can definitely encourage can definitely encourage all of us to continue attempting to access the spaces, to continue raising awareness on platforms like this, to continue encouraging the youth and informing the youth that there are opportunities in the space. I think um, us that are, that are busy with policy directions at that level can also come in and offer the support of making sure that when we develop these things and when we're developing plans and when we're discussing issues of access and ownership and when we're discussing issues of transformation, that we make sure that it is real, that there are barriers it is real that companies, especially our SMMEs um, that are our members today and people who are watching, that they are unsure of how to access the space. They don't have information. The connectivity issue becomes a very painful story because I think COVID-19 has exposed um, the problems that we sit with in that sector. COVID-19 has exposed how untransformed our communities are. COVID-19 has also exposed the barriers that the majority of South Africans are facing. Um, because um, GS, until we remove, we, we tell ourselves that there are no more shacks in South Africa, then we can say our society is equal and that we can all access these things. But I think um, the, the connectivity issue and the fact that underserviced areas don't have access to these things we are doing today, don't have access to ideas of innovation, how to make money from the ideas on YouTube and all the streaming platforms. And I think GS, just to add um, the spirit in which we address these things at, at, at certain different levels, should be that. It should be to make sure all of us can access the spaces, all of us can benefit economically and play in, in mainstream ICT economy. Thank you very much, Chairs. Thank you, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, although we lost uh, uh, Minky a bit earlier on, 
uh, see she's here with us. Uh, any closing words on your side, uh, uh, Minky? Hi, Dennis. Um, sorry about the earlier connectivity, but I just wanted to thank everyone um, and all the panelists. for. Um, uh, I think there's a whole lot of things to unpack going forward. Um, and to the youth, I mean, um, there's also a, 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 and I'll post the, their website, there's also a company called Blue Evo, which is also really advocating and aggregating job, um, project opportunities for creatives. So basically their model is in recognizing that independent creatives do not have access to getting briefs from the bigger uh, brand entities. They basically get those, so they're basically engaging the bigger brands to say, look, yes, you might have work through agencies and all of those, but we have young creatives you can bring into the ecosystem for some of the projects. So they basically aggregate those and then they, and if you're registered with them as a young creative, they post most of these uh, opportunities. And as a creative, whether, and it's different creatives really, some, some of it is just doing brand work, some of it, if it is conceptualizing uh, advertising work for them, um, and you can basically respond to the, to the brief within, within that platform. Uh, but absolutely, I think there is there is more work to be done in when it comes to transformation to to create an economy for the youth. Uh, but also there is also transformation to 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 really uh, have more women coming into into the forefront in the sector. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, from uh, our um, from our chairperson Steph and from Minky, who is also a uh, counselor, a fellow counselor. Uh, with uh, Steph too. And I mean, the combined contribution, I, I think I, I fully appreciated. Transformation being a big one. Um, having women uh, coming to the forefront and be becoming strong leaders in the ICT sectors. And we're talking about communication overall and information systems overall, connectivity overall. Uh, it doesn't matter what background you come from. Uh, right now, our chairperson, Steph, uh, is becoming a connectivity expert in terms of bylaws and so forth. And she's using her law background to become a player in the industry. Five years from now, she's, she, she should have a very, very powerful organization in the ICT space. She could be transforming the law space and finding ways to make that work in the digital environment. She understands the challenges that they faced with. It's very important. I love the fact that uh, uh, Minky is someone who is very, very uh, well versed in terms of uh, in terms of creativity in the creative economy, in broadcasting, uh, and she's talking about uh, uh, VODs, which are video on demand platforms like Netflix and View and uh, Showmax uh, um, and uh, others that are mushrooming all over the place. And we're entering a, 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 an economy where now we could have niche content. You know, uh, and and the ride could be the rise of video on demand, but it has its difficulties of creating original content and those type of things that becomes expensive. As you see, Netflix is is, is uh, uh, almost running in the red because they have to outlay a lot, a lot of capital to acquire and develop a lot of content. But it's about us being creative and finding ways for us to uh, contribute and build new ways. Uh, uh, AKA and Slick on Life were talking about that. Even AKA has built his own AKA TV channel, which is in the form of an app and it charges 50 Rand a month um, for, for you to access exclusive content. So exclusivity, exclusivity uh, and also niche marketing will then be the future of that and allow creatives. Uh, Minky, and also thanks for talking about the uh, uh, aggregation. Uh, uh, so for those who don't understand also, uh, what Minky was talking about is Someone who's an aggregator is like uh, people, uh, the, those platforms you go to when you're looking for jobs, right? Those are aggregation platforms. So uh, many platforms will go there, many companies will go to post, uh, will be able to go there and post opportunities uh, and maybe put a salary structure. These guys go directly to the agencies and say, hey, we can bring you these guys as uh, a Mickey SA. So th that's lovely because then if you're finding it hard, maybe I'm in Dandy uh, and I'd love to do something for Coca-Cola through that platform, I would be able to do a small job, a poster for Coca-Cola, a, a, a little small branding job, a little content shooting, whatever the case may be, which I think is really, really lovely. So uh, we definitely need that link. And I think that on in terms of 
creative economies, we definitely can talk on that without dampening on, on what they're saying. I think we can move, uh, uh, move on. I can see the president is still here. I mean, on my side, there's nothing much to say. I think maybe the president can uh, uh, close uh, with his last remarks on what we're talking about uh, in this fast forward session. And then, yeah, please, are you still with us? Yeah, no, the place is working. Uh, the place works Monday to Monday, or rather Sunday to Sunday. Uh, right now, I know he had to go out to be in the Bundus and uh, sort out a connectivity problem. Uh, he's someone who's extremely dedicated to this, you know, uh, especially on the ground, uh, likes uh, like other companies that we have in the organization. Uh, we have, you know, Zanzi Connect. We have uh, uh, Larry. Uh, sometimes I forget Larry's company, Larry's company, uh, M uh, MLR, and so forth. These, these guys are dedicated. They work every day, they work seven days a week for connectivity. It seems like, uh, Prez, okay, it seems like the president uh, isn't uh, uh, with us, or maybe he's preoccupied, he's with us in, in spirit, which is great. So I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, I would say happy uh, Telecoms and Information, uh, Information Society Day, but uh, yet again, like our chairperson Stephanie said, that uh, transformation is important. So that transformation, once we see connectivity, once we see a decrease of poverty, once we see little kids, uh, little black kids who are able to become economic contributors in this country, we will then be happy because then we can celebrate. Then we would have seen transformation. So it's very important that we, we do this. There's a lot of subject matter we can talk about around uh, uh, connectivity and creative economies. It's very important that we have these sessions continuously, week in, week out, every weekend, so we can spread the message as much as we can. So if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube, please subscribe to the YouTube. If you haven't uh, liked our Facebook page, like our Facebook page, follow. Uh, if you're on Instagram and Twitter, follow us, uh, and we'll be posting more content as we go, uh, cutting down this content as much as we can. We're trying to get people to contribute and people to sponsor. So uh, if you're in a, a post-production company, you have some editors who are bored, they don't have work, you'd like to sponsor, and you can give us three editors to come in and chop up some of this information. I uh, fully appreciate it. If you're running a digital uh, 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 company that does digital advertising and content creation, if you're willing to come in and help us chop and repackage this information, come through and contribute. Uh, our chairperson is working very hard for uh, PBICT to, to, to enable us to give these certifications and value your contribution. And once we have that in place, I'll be very excited to, 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 to always contribute, even through my company, uh, whatever we can do, we'll be able to do the same thing like we do when it's time to design things like the president's uh, company, when things need to happen, we always, uh, uh, every member, every leader, the chairperson herself contributing in uh, advising and law and so forth. So I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. Have a great Sunday. And if you're watching this later, please uh, subscribe, like, follow, uh, all the PBICT everywhere. And yeah, and you guys have a great thing. And I hope that you see this information now, next week, next month, five years from now. I hope it still helps you. Thank you very much. Bye to everyone.